Let's look at Chapter 2 of, Lead of Leadership Theory and Practice by Peter Northhouse. This chapter is called The Trait Approach to Leadership. So let's start off by talking about what is a trait. So a trait is a characteristic of an individual. So it's something that belongs to an individual, whereas in the last chapter we talked about how leadership was really a process. So this is just a small part of leadership. So traits are characteristics of an individual that reflect either cognitive, emotional, or behavioral tendencies. So cognitive means the way that we think. Is somebody a good problem solver? Do they think clearly? Can they, can they calculate uh, the consequences of something? The emotional tendencies they have. Do they tend to have positive reactions, positive emotions? Or do they have, tend to have negative emotions? Or behavioral tendencies. What do they tend to do? So these are what traits are. And the trait approach to leadership is that this, the idea is that some traits are generally associated with people perceived to be leaders. That is, leaders tend to have some traits. And these traits tend not to be found in people who, who aren't real leaders. Except there's no single trait that's found among all leaders. So it's somewhat limited. So there's two main limitations here. First is that it's only looking at the leader, the characteristics of an individual. And there's no trait that's absolutely necessary to be a, a leader. And we'll discuss this more as we uh, go along. So what are some of these major traits that are perceived uh, in people uh, who uh, are seen as, as leaders? First of all, there's intelligence or cognitive ability. And that can be defined as verbal, perceptual, and reasoning abilities. Um, pretty much just somebody that's smart. Um, so this is a, a, an important quality to be perceived by others as a leader, and it's also an important factor in actual effective leadership. When we measure what leaders are effective, we see that intelligence or cognitive ability is, is almost always a, a factor there. Second quality is uh, self-confidence, certainty about one's competencies and skills, knowing what one can do, and perhaps knowing what one can't do also. A uh, good example of this was uh, Steve Jobs when he was leading Apple. He was very self-confident and he accurately uh, could uh, uh, understood what his strengths were and he made the most of them. Other leadership tra traits include determination, the desire to get the job done, like taking initiative, persistence, and drive. A good example of this was is Bill Gates who founded and led Microsoft, and now he's given that up and said he wants to do something more important. And so he's been leading the Bill and Melinda Gates uh, Foundation in the fight against all kinds of diseases. And because of his determination and focus, he's used his resources to, an, to accomplish an awful lot of good things. Integrity is also an important leadership. And that's, integrity can be defined as the, uh, the quality of being honest and trustworthy. A good example is Billy Graham, uh, an American uh, uh, preacher or pastor who uh, died uh, recently. Um, because he was so famous, he was constantly under scrutiny. And he did pretty well. There's a few times that he messed up, and he owned up to his own... Uh, uh, mess, uh, times that he messed up, but in general he was as honest as and trustworthy as anybody uh, could be. Another trait is sociability. You can see the word social there. And that's pe leaders' inclination to seek out pleasant social interactions, and just have good relationships with people. An example of that is John Wallace, the president of, of Azusa Pacific University, where I teach. He is just a really social person that is really good with developing great relationships every place that he's at, and people just really enjoy being with him. Another way 
of looking at traits is to look at personality traits. And to look at personality traits and see how they're related to leadership, we should look at what's known as the five-factor personality model uh, of personality. The, this five-factor model, or the big five, are uh, it's, a, it's a theoretical th framework of personality that's become the dominant model in research in the last uh, 25 or 30 years. And the idea is that there's five personality traits that all other personality traits are related to. And this holds up really well under research, so that's what almost all researchers uh, use nowadays to study uh, a personality. So what are these five factors or these five collections of traits. First of all, we start off with neuroticism, and this is the tendency to be depressed, anxious, insecure, vulnerable, or hostile. Those things kind of go together, not always, but they tend to go together, and the thing that they have in common is this negative emotion. So neuroticism can be uh, viewed as this tendency to have negative emotions, and you person can be high in neuroticism and have lots of negative emotions, or low in neuroticism and not have very many negative uh, emotions. Kind of the opposite of that is extroversion, and that's the tendency to be sociable and assertive and to have positive energy and a lot of positive emotions. And again, people can be high in extroversion or low in extroversion, and that would be uh, considered introversion. But neuroticism, the negative emotions, and the extroversion, the positive emotions, tend to be uh, independent of each other. So one can be low in neuroticism, not have very many negative emotions, but also low in extroversion and not have very many positive emotions, and any combination of those. Openness to experience is the third factor, and this is the tendency to be informed, to want to get new knowledge, to be creative, insightful, and curious. And so this is the idea that, oh, I want to get in new information. I'm, I'm interested. I'm open to new experiences. Agreeableness is the fourth factor, and that's this tendency to be accepting, conforming, trusting, and nurturing in one's interpersonal relationships. And then conscientiousness, which is really important in all fields of leadership and organizational psychology, is this tendency to be thorough, organized, controlled, dependable, and decisive. If you tend to get all of your assignments in on time, to follow all the rules, and you like APA formatting, that's a sign of being highly conscientious. If being on time is a struggle, and following rules isn't something that you especially uh, 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 strive for, then you might be a little lower on conscientiousness. Now, how do these five factors relate to leadership? Well, research indicates that there's a strong relationship between the five big five personality traits and leadership, especially perceived leadership, and to some degree, effective leadership. First of all, people high in extroversion tend to be strongly associated with being a leader. You've got to be out there with people. You've got to be out there influencing people because that's the main uh, aspect of our definition of leadership is influencing others towards a common goal. So people high in extroversion tend to be perceived as leaders. People high in conscientiousness tend to be high effective leaders. They actually get things done and change uh, and actually influence people. They, they follow the rules, they get things done on time, they do what they say that they're going to do, they make sure that things happen. High openness is also related to uh, 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 effective leadership. You need to be able to constantly getting information from other people, reinterpreting, making sense out of it, and communicating it to other people. And then low neuroticism is also associated with effective leadership. This being able to get things done without being hijacked, hijacked by one's negative emotions. Now the fifth trait, agreeableness, high agreeableness is 
a bit related to effectiveness and leadership, but it's only weakly related to leadership. But everybody wants the people that they're working with to be highly agreeable, and so highly, being highly agreeable is super effective in interviews and getting hired. Another uh, trait affected with uh, um, the leaders is emotional intelligence. Now, what do we mean by emotional intelligence? Motion, emotional intelligence is an ability, just like um, uh, intelligence, cognitive ability uh, is an ability, but emotional intelligence is the ability to perceive and manage emotions in oneself and others. So it's basically figuring out what your own emotions are, figuring out what the emotions that other people are having, and managing those so that they help people work towards accomplishing uh, their goals. So the underlying premise here is that people who are able to manage their own and other people's emotions will be more effective leaders. It's not just getting the work done, it's controlling and managing your own emotions and the emotions of other people so that everybody can focus and get the work done that needs to be uh, uh, done. Now let's talk about this trait approach to leadership, this approach that says that leaders should have certain traits. It focuses exclusively on the leader. Now we've seen that leadership is really a process between leaders and followers, so that's one of the limitations of the trait approach. So we ask, what traits do leadership uh, do leaders exhibit, and who has these traits? So using this approach, a lot of times organizations will use personality assessments to assess and to find the right people for a position. The assumption is that people will uh, uh, have certain traits, and these traits will uh, increase their organizational effectiveness. Now, this is especially conscientiousness that uh, people uh, look for, but also uh, extroversion and dominance are often uh, uh, measured also. So, um, the idea is that specific characteristics and traits are necessary for specific positions, and so you want to hire for these. And so, a lot of times you'll have personality assessments to measure for fit, and then you can use different uh, uh, instruments. Uh, the LTQ, the Leadership Trait Questionnaire, that's found in Chapter 2 of, uh, of North House, um, is a way of measuring traits to some degree. Some tests are more so sophisticated. The Myers-Briggs, um, which some of you might be uh, familiar with, is uh, uh, especially effective in understanding people's traits in team uh, contexts. And it's not necessarily appropriate for leadership hiring, but for in team contexts, it helps people understand uh, traits v uh, very much. So what are some of the strengths of this trait approach? First of all, it intuitively appeals to followers. Because everybody has the perception that, lead, that some people are worthy of following because of their traits. They're smart, they're ethical, they have integrity, they care about you. So people need to view people as gifted and having these traits in order to be able to wanting to, to follow them. And secondly, it's credible due to a century of research and support. We know that not any single trait is absolutely necessary all the time, but we know that in general, people with these traits will be a more effective uh, leaders. Another strength is it highlights the role of leader in the leadership process. The leader really does matter and it provides benchmarks for what to look for and when choosing a leader and for to evaluate people who would be appropriate for leadership positions. Now there's some criticism of the trade approach because of that limitations too. One is that there's no definitive list of leadership traits. Many lists have emerged over uh, the last century of research and the book spends quite a bit of time talking about how these lists have a uh, change as we've done more and more research. But the big limitation is that it doesn't take into account situational effects. Leaders in one situation might not, might not be leaders in another situation because they 
just having the traits isn't enough. They need to know how to adapt to the situation. Now, many of the lists of essential leadership traits are highly subjective. Um, research often fails to look at the traits in relationship to leadership outcomes. A lot of times, a lot of studies just look at, oh, what leaders do you like the most? And, or what leaders, what qualities do you want to see in your leaders? It doesn't actually look at who can uh, actually get the job done. And secondly, because it is subjective, it's always difficult to measure a trait in an individual. If we've got a thousand people, we can get general measures of trait that might not be precise for very many people, but in general, we can see these general tendencies. But when you're looking at a specific individual, it's much more hard, uh, much more difficult to, uh, to measure. And also, the trait approach has limited usefulness in training and development. You can't really train somebody to be more intelligent. We know that approximately for each full each uh, uh, year of full-time education, people's IQ will go up one, two, three points, something like that. Um, but just having a training seminar is not going to make somebody more intelligent. Um, and it's, it's, it's a little difficult for, for development because a lot of responsibility for the traits that we can change fall on ourselves, and you can't train somebody to be more honest or have higher integrity unless they're personally uh, motivated to, uh, to do that based on their, their own values. Now, at Azusa Pacific, we like looking at these different uh, uh, perspectives from a biblical perspective. So that's what I want to do now, because from a biblical perspective, the importance of traits is extremely high because we are responsible for our behavioral and emotional and cognitive uh, tendencies. There's a passage in the Bible that shows how important these traits are and how we're responsible for them. It says, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge. So we're getting a list of traits here that we're responsible for developing. And to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if you possess these qualities, these traits, if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive. These are the responsibility of anybody who wants to, to honor God, who wants to be a follower of Jesus Christ. These are important traits to be working on developing continually and always growing in these areas.